Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, your captain of chaos, your criminal confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather from March 12, 2025. Well, we have a bit of a drought developing on the East Coast. We're going to talk about that. Western Kona's pattern, well, that is to say, a pattern where the all the action is coming into the, from the eastern Pacific into the west coast, the Rockies, the plains, the upper Midwest, which is one of the reasons why we have a developing drought on the east coast. Also, there are some hints showing up on some of the models of a subtropical low forming uh, just east of the Bahamas, March 18th, 19th, to 20th. And then, of course, we're going to talk about two more major east coast, eastern, sorry, Pacific, not east coast, but eastern Pacific troughs the next 10 days, with some really monster storms coming up here for the plains, the upper Midwest, and then warm temperatures of the eastern U.S. So let's get right to it. This here is the website, in case you haven't been to it. And there's our shop page. You can get lots of different great weather products there, including the uh, three-week newsletter. There's the latest edition, as you can see. And uh, then, of course, you can also, another product which you might be interested in, is the Mid-Atlantic forecast. It comes out every other day. And as you can see, it covers uh, Maryland, Delaware, uh, West Virginia, North Carolina. And woke it up in the 12 zones, and you get a nice detailed forecast, week two, some maps, some discussions, all only for 35 bucks a month. Uh, this is really useful if you are um, doing livestock um, just or any, any kind of a long-term planning. You get, like I said, because you get a forecast out to 14 days, essentially. We don't give you detailed week two forecast because you really can't do that. I know you think you can get that on the Weather Channel. You really can't. Or AccuWeather, that, does, that sort of skill doesn't exist and will never exist because it violates one of the basic laws of, of science. But the deep forecast out to seven days, like I said, only 35 bucks. It's also great for uh, if you're growing stuff, vineyards, for livestock, if for fruit farming, uh, any kind of agricultural concerns, this is a really good product for you. And like I said, it's not that expensive. In case you haven't noticed, this also is the Weather Risk Grains Twitter page. You can see that right here. We talk about uh, overseas U.S. grain weather here. This here is the uh, Blue Sky page. We talk about operational weather here in the Mid-Atlantic. And then, of course, like I mentioned, the uh, three-week newsletter, only five bucks a month. Now, this is the latest on the El Nino and La Nina event, or I should say ENSO. We are ending in La Nina, as you can see here. Um, we have a lot of uh, conditions. This is ENSO Region 1.2. So this is off of the coast of Peru. And this is the zero line you can see as of February 1. We are now, we reached a peak around 1.7, now around uh, 1.4. But as you can see, it's generally going to trend upward. Uh, region 3.4 here, this is the low point here in mid, uh, late January. And then again, also in uh, late December on Christmas. So, and then it took off from there, and now it's well above zero. You can see it's plus 0 0.4 here. So La Nina is way over and dead, no doubt about it. Anybody who tells you there's a La Nina still going on for the spring is full of crap. It's not true at all. With regard to the MJO, things look pretty quiet, actually. Uh, there's the European, here's the CFS. The Europeans, right now, it's rotating around in phase two. Then over the next week, it goes into phase three. And then into the neutral circle, maybe cutting into phase three on the European the CFS has a neutral circle before it gets into phase three. And then most of the time, it just hooks into the neutral circle, as you can see here. So it's not really going to be a player here for the next uh, two weeks on the forecast. Let's look at our teleconnections. We have two on the Pacific side, two on the Atlantic side, um, the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, the PNA, and the Arctic Oscillation, and the NAO on the Atlantic side. So here you can see uh, this is the Atlantic side. We have the AO, and uh, right now, as you can see, it was positive, then early March it went slightly negative. These are the different model projections. You can see these different colored dots here. They all take it positive pretty much all the way in through almost the end of the month. Um, and of course, when the AO is positive, um, it favors above normal temperatures in the eastern U.S. and less storminess, and then colder temperatures in the western U.S. and the upper plains. And the NAO here, again, you can see the dotted, the, the circle black lines we are negative now we're going neutral and then after march 15th we go positive almost to the end of the month so again a positive neo more favors the above normal temperatures in the eastern u.s 
but potentially below normal in the upper plains, the Rockies, and the West Coast, depending on what's going on in the Pacific side. And on the Pacific side, we can see that um, uh, this here is the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, or the Alaskan Ridge Trough. We are now positive, and we stay positive almost through until the end of the month. And that means a favor is near normal or above normal temperatures in the central and eastern U.S., but below normal and increased storminess on the west coast and the Rockies. And that, you'll see that is very true. And here's the PNA pattern again. We're going uh, neutral right now. We're slightly negative. And then we go maybe slightly positive by mid-late uh, 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 March. But we are in the next 7 to 10, 12 days, we're going to be negative here. And that favors below normal temperatures over the western third of the U.S. and then an increased storminess in the Pacific, the, upper, the Rockies, the Upper Plains, and mild on the East Coast. So all we have is mild symbols here, mild signals east of the Mississippi River. Now let's talk about our drought conditions. You can see here, now we have a lot of drought here in the Upper Plains, Upper Midwest, mostly because of lack of snow cover. But on the East Coast here, notice we have some D1s and D2s developing in from D.C. up to Boston and then in the eastern portions of the Carolinas. Notice that Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, we're kind of in a gap here. So we're not seeing much precipitation. And there's, there's reasons for that. This is February. and You can see that the best rains actually fell. If you look at the month of February, this green color is 7 to 10 inches across Kentucky into southwest Virginia and West Virginia and then uh, up to four to seven inches in the orange area, yellow area around the green. And you can see this is the anomalies, and you can see a streak of very wet conditions, fairly wet conditions, Virginia, Kentucky, and then into northern Arkansas, far southern Illinois. But to the north of that, the Ohio Valley, New England is pretty dry, and the southeast region is pretty dry. And you can even see that here. Now, since this is March 1, this is the last 10 days here, 11 days, this is actual precipitation on the left, and this is the precipitation anomalies. So it has been pretty dry. You can see, and that's because of this big ridge developing over the central and eastern U.S. All the action is to the west coast. So whenever the west coast gets a trough, the eastern U.S. gets a ridge, and that shuts down the cold fronts, or at least makes them a lot weaker when they do arrive, and you're not getting any precipitation with it. So that's what we're looking at. So it's in, I mean, you can see the, orange, the red colors here, that's, well below a quarter of an inch in Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, and the orange colors covering much of Virginia, West and North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New York State, that's a, a, a half inch to one inch since March 1st, and that's all you can see. This is all well below normal. The only areas we've seen near normal rain is, or even above has been Maine, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and then the coastal areas of the Carolinas. They've done pretty well down here with uh, those significant rain systems coming out of Texas, last two of them. So they're getting rains down in the southeast region. Now this is the, up, this is the actual, this is the upper map here for the Thursday. And we can see a couple of really nice features here. Notice there's our blocking feature in Greenland, a very nice negative NEO, and there's the polar vortex. It's pretty strong and fairly far to the south. And normally this kind of weather pattern might produce a cold and or wintry interval in the eastern U.S., but it doesn't do that because of this monster trough here. The Pacific is so, this trough is so big that it dominates the Atlantic side. And look at these temperatures. These are the max temperatures on Tuesday. These are the max temperatures on Wednesday. Notice the dividing lines around Interstate 80. That's where it really gets warm. So, but, and, you know, this makes sense. It's perfect, not a surprise here at all. Now, there is a little bit of a trough you can see right here in the Tennessee and the Delta <clears throat> that's bringing a little bit of rain again to the Gulf Coast area, but uh, it's not a big deal. And for generally, there's a ridge here over the eastern U.S. Now, this is March 14. OK, this massive trough coming out of the West Coast here, this trough right here is going to swing through the Rockies of the Plain States and develop a major system here. Let me blow this up. You can see it a little bit. Okay, so this is the trough here. You can see this massive trough, the first piece of energy here. The second one is in California coming down. The third one is in the Northern Pacific, right? Okay, and that causes, this massive trough causes an equally strong ridge here Friday into Saturday. Now, this low is going to track up into the Great Lakes, and its cold front is going to slowly, slowly push its way across the eastern U.S., but it's going to take its time. Let me show you what I mean here. So if I move the synchronous map down, here's the big low now for uh, Friday. And it's coming out of Colorado. It's in western Kansas. Tremendous warm air surging northward in the Gulf of Mexico. The potential certainly exists for significant severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has gone in enhanced level three here in the Mississippi Valley. Notice there's not a lot of snow associated with this system. 
right? And this system, uh, as it tracks up to the north, you can see here that the, the low is going to separate, as you'll see in a second, uh, the main low going up into uh, the Great Lakes, and then the southern end of the front is going to stall. And it's going to stall because of this upper air pattern. This is the upper air pattern Sunday night. So the uh, southern end of the, the trough fragments, this trough is going to fragment into two pieces. And we end up getting here, you can see it fragmenting already, and then uh, here we get the fragmentation. And the southern end of the front causes a second area of low pressure to form on the Gulf Coast, and you still have the Gulf of Mexico open for business and a very strong ridge in the West Atlantic Ocean. So this cold front is going to be very slow to move. Let me show you what I mean. This is the cold front here for Saturday night. So it's in Toronto, then Ohio, then Kentucky, Tennessee. That means Saturday looks pretty good on the East Coast. I know some people are wondering about rain on Saturday. I don't see that at all. From Georgia to Maine, New York, I don't see that. Now, maybe showers come in Saturday night, maybe. Okay. Then... Uh, the cold front moves very slowly here. This is Sunday afternoon and evening. You got rain from Georgia through Virginia up into New York State and New England. And that makes sense to me. Notice the highs off the coast, so you're still getting strong southerly winds pumping moisture into the cold front on both of these maps. So these rainfall amounts could be pretty good. All right. Now, what happens beyond that? Well, <clears throat> this trough, let me call it my marker here, this trough moves in breaks apart and, and begins to uh, um, merge with this piece of energy here in the Central Atlantic Ocean. And when the result is a closed upper low here. Let me show it to you if I can develop it. I'll show the right map here. Um, not there. It is, um, yes, here. Okay. So now we have uh, this trough that was coming through is now um, over the Bahamas and off the, east, off the southeast coast. And the huge ridge is above it. You see that? So this is the ridge that was here, right? So this allows the, this feature here and this piece of energy here to coagulate or co coalesce into one system or just north of the Bahamas. And we end up getting this. This appears to be some kind of subtropical low forming to the northeast of the Bahamas. They are high to the, along the east coast. This storm is coming out of the Rockies, it's going to pass up to the north. So this ridge is very strong and, and very possible this could be a subtropical storm around March 20th. We'll see. And that, in fact, is what shows up. You can see it on the operational European 500 model. Look at this. That's a very intense low. That's a subtropical storm if the model is correct. Now, it might not be correct. This might be overdone. All right. So we went from this on the evening of the 16th and 17th to this on the 20th. And, okay, so the system coming in from the Rockies, this next system sweeps across the West Coast, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Rockies into the Plain States, and we get this monster, March 20th, in Kansas and Missouri. But there's more energy coming in here on the Pacific Northwest, and another piece of energy, big trough, shortwave energy coming into the Gulf of Alaska. So bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Meanwhile, we have this big subtropical low here with the enormous ridge to the north of it, okay, ventilating the system, this could be a subtropical storm on March 20th. So I just want to point that out to you, all right? And meanwhile, the surface map looks pretty darn impressive. Okay, so this is now March 19th, 20th here, and you can see the low, it's still lingering right there in the Bahamas, trapped underneath this high. There's the high here, the high is a little further east. This looks like a subtropical system, you ask me. Meanwhile, the huge storm here showing up in Missouri and Kansas produces this surface map, and this is a blizzard for western Kansas, eastern Nebraska, northwest Iowa. That's what this is. Look at the isobars here. Now, earlier, this storm is further north. It had it hitting the Minnesota and the Dakotas and eastern Colorado, eastern Wyoming, eastern Montana. Now it's a little further east. And as you can see, it tracks up through the Midwest, mostly rain, maybe some snow in the Great Lakes. And we still have to watch the subtropical storm underneath it. As we go out on the March 22nd, 23rd, 24th, uh, on the European, we can see that the uh, subtropical system is kicked further east. And we have more energy coming in to uh, the Pacific Northwest, which is going to dive into the plains of the Midwest and become another significant Midwest plains storm for March 24th. 
Meanwhile, on the East Coast, we have ridge after ridge after ridge, and it suppresses the rainfall, and things remain uh, mild but dry. And in this sort of pattern here on March 24th, you have there's a ridge on the East Coast, another one on the West Coast in the Rockies, and in between, you've got your trough and your cold and then rain. In the plains, mostly the eastern plains, the delta, and the, and the Midwest. But not on the East Coast, it remains pretty warm and dry, according to what these models are showing. Even here with this big subtropical low on March 20th, in the Bahamas, look at the huge ridge here over the East Coast, keeping it warm and dry. All right. Anyway, that's the presentation. As we go further out in time here, just one last image I want to show you here. This is March 25, and you can see, again, the trough remains in the middle portion of the country. It's negatively tilted, so this might be a big system for the Midwest. But there's a strong ridge on the, in the southeast Canada um, and another one on the Rockies in the, into the Pacific Northwest, West Coast. So this keeps this trough running in a northwest-southeast orientation right here. And it's negatively tilted, and it could be another significant system for the plains in the Midwest around March 24, 25. All right, that's the presentation. That's this week in weather. I will uh, see you over on the Weather Risk uh, uh, Facebook page, the website, and over on the Blue Sky page.